in my experience, how prasadam was very effective in um, delivering somebody who I could now call a friend, in the very least, a friend. We, in the early 70s, we would travel in an old Volkswagen van. This color was like an orange color. And, you know, those vans, we put the books, we'd build a little box inside, or from the back to the front, we would have just uh, a floor. And under the floor, we would have all our books and a few. We only only allowed to have a bag this big of our personal items traveling. We were all young men. I was a, still a Grihastra, but the other boys were all Brahmachari. We would all sleep in the vans at night. We'd travel and stop and you know, seven seven sleeping bags, so like sardines in a can. You know, one boy would turn and all the other six boys would be obliged to turn. Like, <laughs> like Prabhupada said, packed up tight in Krishna consciousness. But we, we loved the austerities. We were so happy traveling and preaching. You know, we were in our 20s doing books. In the snow and the rain and the heat of the snow, we didn't care. We were just happy. But we'd sleep sometimes outside at night when it was really hot. The difficult part was the, um, the winter because it would snow. And we tried our best to be like really tough, you know. Bhamacharis, they were like, oh, okay. We, you know, but it got really cold. <laughs> and it, you know... Instead of like being, you find all the boys on top of each other at night, the sleeping bags, it was so cold. They get them piled up in one corner, so cold. So we started like, we got an idea that we would go to uh, the monasteries because France is a Catholic country and um, they have a lot of monasteries where celibate monks would live. So we got this idea that instead of sleeping in the cold van, it was affecting our, our book distribution because we were just we're getting sick and so forth. We got an idea that, so we started, in our travels, we would sometimes go to a monastery. And they were usually in isolated, always in isolated places. And, you know, we'd inquire, is it possible that we could stay with you for a night? And they'd always look at us like, because in those days the movement wasn't known. Well, who are you? you know, we're monks. We've just come back from India. And uh, do you believe in Jesus? Oh, yeah, we, we, we believe in Jesus Christ. He, he's our Savior. All right, come on in. <laughs> And we'd stay for a night or two like that. And different, there were Benedictine monks and this monks. And, but my favorite monks were the Trappist monks. Because the Trappist monks, their lifestyle was more akin to the way we would live as, as devotees. They were strictly celibate. You know, they were strictly vegetarian, which is unusual in the Christian church. Strictly vegetarian. Simple living high thinking, they would just spend their time, most of their time they would just sit and think of God and pray, basically. You know, they'd go off to a certain part of the monastery and they would just, you know, think, reflect on God and Jesus like this. So we tended to um, prefer those, those type of monasteries. So one winter, I think it was the winter of 70, 1975, we were distributing books in the Alsace-Lorraine, which is a, just before Germany, the eastern part of France. We were distributing books in that area. And we were out for a month or two, and the winter started settling in. And uh, actually, it wasn't winter. It was towards the end of summer, but it was a, a, a cool autumn that was coming very quickly. And we were getting cold. So boys said, Mara, did not, I wasn't a mirage at the time, but they were saying, can we stay in the monastery? So I drove around and I found a monastery way up in the mountains in the Alsace-Lorraine. It was like an hour and a half drive into the closest town, which was called Metz. I saw that and I saw it from a distance and I said, OK, I'll bring the boys up here tonight. Because if we came up in late at night, it was hard for them to say no, to like refuse us. We, after Sankirtan, our day of book distribution, we drove. We arrived around 10.30 at night. And these monks would generally take rest around 8.30 or so. Like, like knocked on the door. The big, big, huge, like, monastery, like a castle. And because the autumn was coming early and it was getting cool, all the leaves had fallen down and there were bare trees there. And, you know, it was dark and the wind was howling. <laughs> it was a full moon. It looked a little scary. I was thinking, is this really a monastery? Or is this like a haunted house? 
So I was knocking, boom, boom, boom. Nothing was happening. The boys were, come on, knock louder, knock louder, it's getting cold. Boom. And finally, through the stained glass, I could see a, like a lantern coming from a long distance and down the hallway. It's coming. Do I believe in ghosts? I don't know. It was a big wooden door. And there was a monk. And these monks, they dressed in the old, uh, you know, the medieval robes, the, the brown. They had brown robes and they had a tie. And they wear these like pointed, like wayward. Woo! Like wayward his head like that. Yes. Um, f- 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 father, I'm a monk. I just came back from India and I'm really cold and tired. Can I spend the night here? Who are you? Well, I, I'm a monk. I practiced a tradition from the East, very similar to what you're doing. I'm vegetarian, I'm celibate. And do you read the Bible? Oh, yeah, yeah. Every single day I read the Bible. <laughs> Every single day. Not a day goes by. What do you want? How long do you want to stay? Yeah, like, like one or two nights, you know, please. Are you alone? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> I've got seven friends in the van. Seven friends. Hmm? started to close the door. Father, Father, please, in the name of Jesus, please, don't leave me out in the cold. All right. You can stay three nights no longer. You can sleep in the basement. (laughs) Oh, thanks. And you can come for breakfast. But no speaking at breakfast. Meditate on Jesus. Yes, Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, the will be on earth as in heaven. All right. Bring your friends in. Thank you, Father. We were dressed as devotees. And we were very respectful because these priests were always giving us shelter. And sometimes when we were allowed to talk to them, very interesting conversations would develop. And we would appreciate the similarities between our traditions. But this was like kind of a special introduction <laughs> so the boys came in and then you know we bought our sleeping bags and our little possession we'd in the basement it was like a hard stone floor there were no windows just this door <laughs> no lights flashlight so we went to sleep and in the morning <laughs> a knock on our door Time for breakfast. So we got up and ran to the near place where it was like a bucket shower type thing. And we took our and we came upstairs. And there were like 25 monks at this long wooden table like this. Couldn't see the faces, just this long, this big. <laughs> so, you know, we sat down and we were all looking at each other. And I took my chatter over my head and... <laughs> I went through about 20 verses, everything I knew. I'm still praying. <laughs> One of the boys, his, his stomach started to churn. One of the monks said, So I went through my verses about four times. <laughs> and then at the same time, they all raised their heads. Hi, guys. <laughs> and no one would look at me. And then they brought in the soup. And then they brought in the grand course, which was an apple. <laughs> that was the main meal. 
of the day. <laughs> we didn't eat again until night. And we came back at night. It was soup and an apple, a little piece of toast. No butter, <laughs> no cheese, no tomato, nothing. So then we, in the morning we said the prayer like that and we were eating, eating very slowly. And you can't <laughs> the soup. No, no, no. <laughs> don't suck the soup. When you bite the apple, don't crunch. <laughs> and don't dare make a noise when you swallow it. So we were appreciative. They were, you know, very renounced. So I was thinking yogis, they had their techniques. So I w we were respectful. And we were, it took forever to eat that apple. <laughs> Finally, you know, we were all finished. It took about 40 minutes to eat. And then everyone stood up at the same time. And they went to their chambers to meditate all day long. I was thinking, wow, these guys are really, these monks are very serious. So that day I said to the boys, I said, okay, no sankhya, you're just going to study all day. We'll, we'll learn from these monks. <laughs> the boys are like studying. <laughs> I said, okay, forget it. Just go on sankhya time. <laughs> so we came out and we drove, you know, an hour and a half into Mets and we did our sankhya time. We came back at night and, you know, we had dinner of sorts. <laughs> so it went on like this for three days and we were given permission to stay longer. And the boys were saying, Indra, we can't go on with just an apple and a soup. <laughs> Got to eat something. So I didn't know what to do because, you know, we couldn't. On the day, you know, they're very busy and I wouldn't let anybody stop because we had a quota. So many books, so much Lakshmi to quota. Just, you know, we we're like taskmaster. Well, when they come home, they were getting like weak. Say, okay, yeah, I agree. One boy said, remember your lecture that... An army runs on its stomach. That's what Napoleon said. Yeah, yeah, I did quote Napoleon, didn't I? <laughs> but he didn't just eat soup and apples with his men to conquer, you know, Europe. You're right, boys. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good quote. And you quoted it. Yeah, right. I remember that lecture. <laughs> we had a big feast afterwards. Yeah, yeah, we had a big feast afterwards. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is we'll bring, because we had the cookers. We were keeping them in the van. We had our big cookers and our pots and pans, everything. So one night we came back really late and we had, we put blankets around them and we brought all our cooking paraphernalia into the basement. <laughs> this is little cheating. <laughs> but I call it white lie, not dark lie. This is very little. And the next day we brought in a bag of rice. <laughs> next day we brought some dal. Next week, we bought some subjis. And after five or six days, the boys are like, we getting... and we got up early and we started cooking in the, cooking in the, and we, you know, the, the door was there and we put like tape there so the smell wouldn't go out. <laughs> you know how the chant sometimes goes anywhere and everywhere in the temple and you're three floors up and <coughs> you're coughing. So we sealed the door, completely sealed the door and we began cooking. Nice prasadam, because, you know, that's an important part of our, again, an army does run on his stomach. So, you know, we were eating nice, tasty prasadam. We had good cooks. And then we'd have a morning program down there. We'd have a morning program, and generally I'd give class, and we'd have guru puja, and singing and dance. We kept it very quiet. One morning, they, boom, boom, a big knock. We had to hide all the pots and cover them with sleeping bags. And the, the head of the monastery, the man who originally, the monk originally came to me, he said, shh. You're making too much noise. So after that, you know, just a little Merdunga, tick 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 boom, 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 boom. We knew the level that we could, wouldn't disturb the monks in the morning. And even though we ate breakfast, we had to sit there for the monks' breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'd look full. It wouldn't look good if we came in full. And I remember one monk was like looking at one of the boys and he said, mm, you are making, he said, after we were going, walking back, he said, you are making advancement. You are satisfied with the apple and the soup. <laughs> 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 
Remember that boy ate something like 11 samosas that morning before we... (laughs) So this went on for about 10 days, actually. You know, and we had this air freshener that after we cooked, we'd spray it everywhere. So, you know, and then we'd open the door and have breakfast, you know, eat our apple and go in Sankatan. But one thing they kept stressing was no interaction with the monks. The head monk, he was very insistent. I think he was feeling we would contaminate them. Because, you know, we were wearing, we had shaved heads and young boys, long sikas and saffron robes. And, you know, you could see some of the monks, sometimes they'd steal a little glance at us during the, the apple and the soup, you know. And they'd be walking away and their head would turn. You see this eye come out from this, you know, hood. And like, mm-hmm. So you could tell there was some curiosity. But we, we were very strict. I told the boys, look, okay with the cooking, but don't interact with the monks because this is their lifestyle and this is their meditation. This is their path. And we should respect that. It's a bona fide path. And don't interact. And also, you know, it's getting colder. Although it was, you know, like late August or something. It was a very early autumn coming in. It was, well, so we don't want to sleep in our van, right? Yeah, okay, so. So we were very careful, although we would cost each other in the path, in the hall. We would chant around sometimes outside, and the monks would be there meditating. And, you know, but it was, it was a little odd because there was no interaction, but that's okay. So one morning, I think on the 10th, 11th day, uh, just as I was starting to give class, there was a knock. I cover all the pots, you know, put the air freshener out, you know, <laughs> sit down like nothing's happening. I open the door, and there's a monk there. Older, he's like, he must have been 80s, early 80s. He said, this is all in French, but I won't say it in French because you understand. He said, may I come in? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think it's a good idea. I said, because, you know, the head monk here, he said, no interaction. He said, I know, I know, he said, but I just, I'm so curious. You people look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been here for 45 years. I, I, this is what I want. I, I said, I just closed the door. I said, Father, please go back. And I closed the door. Because I didn't want to get in trouble. And then, you know, knock, knock, knock on heaven's door. The longer you knock, somebody's going to open. So after 10 knocks, oh. I said, what's your name? He said, uh, je suis le Father Pierre. I am Father Peter, Father Pierre. I said, okay, okay, Father, you can come in. But you can't. I said, I know, I know. I'm not supposed to tell anybody. I know. I just want to, like, see what you do. <laughs> what we do? <laughs> You're, like, chanting, dancing, and feasting? As opposed to apple, soup, and solitary meditation every day? I said, I don't think it's going to work. He said, just please. He said, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Okay, one time. It's very confidential. Ah, oui, 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 c'est la confidence. Ah, oui. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I sat down and the boy went under the blanket. He started cooking under the blanket. <laughs> you know, brahmacharis. They can sleep anywhere and eat anytime. Of course, I don't know if that goes for Ph.D. brahmacharis and chow powder. But... So, after a while, you know, the chaunch was coming out and the priest, <coughs> what is that? It, it's nothing, it's just the dust. The dust? There's no dust here. I said, okay, Father, look, I'm going to let you in on something, but you have to promise me. You're not going to say, we're cooking down here. He went, no. Le soup? <laughs> You're cooking le soup? Uh, well, yeah, but it's got a few other things that you guys have. Like you have salt. We have like, you know, cumin seeds, asphetida, turmeric. <laughs> and, you know, we put it with, on some rice. And he said, oh. I said, but, you know, this is what we do. These are young boys. They're, they're not just meditating. They're Sharing the message of Jesus. Oh, yes, I understand. Okay, so I took the blankets off and the cooking and the pots. He looked back, he went, 
whoa. <laughs> Three pots, you know, chapatis, this and that, everything's going on. So I said, it's okay. So then I gave a class. And because he was there, I gave an introductory class, like from Bhagavad Gita. And I explained how, you know, God is a person, we share the same conviction. But the beauty of India, the beauty of Vedic culture, is that the personality of Godhead is revealed. I said, this is an essential ingredient in, a, in our tradition because it's very difficult to love someone you don't know. So, I was, and, and as I was saying this, he was like nodding. I said, it's, you know, how can you fall in love with someone you've never known? The goal of religion is to love God. But how can you love God if you don't know anything about him other than he's just benevolent? He was like, hmm, oui, oui, oui. <laughs> this is true, he said. And I said, you know, what attracts us to God is his, is his beauty and his personality, his pastimes, his abode, his associates. Ah, oui, oui, oui. Hey, qu'est-ce que c'est, cette Dieu? He'd say, what is this God? So I'd open the Bhagavatam. I said, ça c'est le Dieu. I said, this is God. Ah, c'est joli. It means, ça joli. He's beautiful. I said, oui. oui. <laughs> yes. He said, I am coming back tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Father Pierre, we had an arrangement. He said, no, no, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Si vous. I said, play. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Okay, you can come back tomorrow, but just don't make sure no one sees you. Oh, no, 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 no one will see me. No, 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 no. I know this, I know this monastery backwards and forwards. I have been here as a young man. I know everything. I can sneak you. Know. Okay. Have a good day, Father. And he left. And I was just kind of hoping he wouldn't come back because, you know, I mean, I do like to preach and like to share, but I thought, God, this is going to jeopardize our whole mission here. Right, what can I do? Somebody's interested to hear the message of Krishna consciousness. You have to go to whatever risk it requires. So sure enough, one minute before the Bhagavatam class, but I wasn't sure it was Father Pierre, so I covered all the pots, put the Brahmacharya under the blanket, the whole ritual, <laughs> opened the door, it's Father Pierre. I said to the boy, it's Father Pierre, he came out of the blanket, <laughs> started cooking. This went on for four days. And I got deeper and deeper and deeper into the philosophy. Super soul, you know, the, 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 the Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Shuradakshai Vishnu, all the, you know, everything, the creation, the Goloka Vrindavan, gopis. He accepted everything. Ah, oui, oui, ça c'est vrai. <laughs> like, he didn't disagree with anything. Nothing. He was an intellectual. A devoted intellectual. He must have been a very intelligent boy and he joined the church and he applied his intelligence in a devotional way. But the knowledge, you know, even Jesus said, with all due respect to our Christian brothers and sisters, Jesus said, I have more to teach you, but you are not ready to bear it. These were his words in those ancient times. I have more to teach you, but you are not ready to bear it. Which means that he had given them the message as much. He knew everything. He sat at the right hand of his father. This means Jesus theoretically had full realization of God, full realization of Krishna. We hear that he spent time in Jagannath Puri. There's historical records to that effect. Therefore, Prabhupada said Jesus Christ is one of our spiritual masters. He was a Vaishnava teaching devotion to God. But under the circumstances where he, the time, place, even what, the, even what he taught them, for the most part, they rejected, except the apostles and some followers. Unfortunately, tragically, and they crucified him. So he was not able to reveal more than the people of that time. Like a professor, what can he? He knows complicated mathematics, you know, algebra, trigonometry. But what can he speak to first or second graders? He leads them on the, uh, uh, the gradual path to full understanding. So that is our understanding of um, Lord Jesus. And what's more, he's a pure devotee of God. So in, in, that, in essence, he is our spiritual master. So. But the, the, 
there are people to to solidify their faith. They need intelligent answers to their questions. And therefore, we have Vedic literature. And li Vedic literature is not just for the people of Bharat, but it's for the whole world. And now by Mahaprabhu's mercy, it's present. And many people are coming forward, not necessarily changing their religion, but becoming better Christians and better Muslims and better Jews by reading our books. I have practical experience with that. People's faith in God is increasing. We don't ask them to change religion, just become better devotees of God. So that was our relationship with Father Pierre. I let him come in here and he was saying, yes, I said, oh, and we're going deep. And he, because an intelligent man, he was catching it. It was so nice. I was looking forward to Bhagavatam class every day. In fact, a couple of times I had to run upstairs without eating our prasada because it was time for breakfast because the Bhagavatam class went so long like this class. <laughs> so one day I took a chance. You know, I said, Father Pierre, can you stay for breakfast? No, 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 no. I said, Father Pierre, this is God's food. This food is blessed. We are offering it to God with authorized prayers. God is accepting. He's really, and by his mercy, he's leaving the remnants. He said, yes, this is the meaning of, 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 uh, saying the prayer to, to God when we offer food. It just made, it just made sense to him. But, mm, s'il vous plaît, no. No, no, no. Come on, Father, just take a bite. No, 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 no. <laughs> he left. For a couple of days, I just kept, and then the class was all about prashadam. <laughs> like recipes and how it tastes and the effect. You know, I told the, so many prashadam stories, you know, how Ramanujacharya, to show the potency of prashadam, he took some of the remnants from his plate, some rice. He threw it into the river and some fish ate it and the fish assumed their forearm farms as Vaikuntha, residents of Vaikuntha and rose out of the water in front of the eyes of everyone, entered into a flower airplane and went back to Vaikuntha. And, and Ramanujacharya was demonstrating to his followers the power of prasadam. And you know in India, when you go to the temple, like I just came from Govindaji in, in Jaipur, how the people take a small portion of prasad and with such great reverence, they pray and they eat that prasad. So I was giving, I was telling stories like that. And Father Pierre was like, like he started to kind of drool. Just like. And the brahmacharis, they were like, stop, you know, we're hungry. What do you keep talking like that for? We're going to eat. You know, I was talking about, you know, Sweet rice and, you know, cheese filled samosas and halibut <laughs> with, halibut with raspberries and pure ghee and, and, and nice, you know. And they were just like drooling the body. They were just drooling. I'm saying, I have a purpose here, boys. Just hold on. <laughs> so after we'd been there, I think it was almost two weeks, I, I, I said, Father Pierre, please, it's God's food. You're a devotee of God. You can't refuse. So he becomes so purified. He said, He said, I cannot argue anything you say to me. I said, yes, this is because my spiritual master has taught me this perfect philosophy. He was just like so intrigued. So he sat down. And he said, Eh oui, s'il vous plaît, attitude. So that day, he just took a little pinch of rice. But that rice had ghee in it, you know. And his wife, <laughs> so bear in mind, for 45 years, he'd only eaten that simple diet of soup and apple and a little toast. He was just like swooned when he took that rice. He said, merci, au revoir. And he left very quickly. I thought, well, at least something, right? And the boy said, yeah, well, let's finish it off, you know. And they're... <laughs> so the next, actually that day, no, yeah, that day was Balaram's appearance day, late in August or early September, I can't remember. So I drove back to Paris, which was a good 10-hour drive, to get more books from, the, from our go-down, as you call it, you know, from our factory there. Where we kept the books. I drove back, and while I was there, you know, it was just, some quirk of fate that I happened to drive on Balaram's appearance day and arrive in time for the feast. I didn't plan it like that. 
That's not true. <laughs> Can't tell too many white lies. Anyway, I got there just in time for the feast. Mm, boy, it was so good. We had the best cooks in the movement at that time, believe me. Conti and Kishore, these girls, I just remember them as being so talented. And it was a Balaram, you know, Balaram appearance day. There's so many sweets and there's Varuni beverage. So I told the devotees, I have these seven brahmacharis back in the mountains of the Alsace-Lorraine. And, you know, I would really appreciate if you would stock up some prasad. Those girls were so kind. They made these like big buckets of rascoolas and gulab jamans and sweet rice and burfi and para and, you know, sweet and sour subji with curd and uh, uh, pineapple and tomatoes and four sub. I mean, it was I practically I had to leave half the books behind. <laughs> but I had a selfish interest. So <laughs> we, left, we left them and I wanted the boys to be happy. So I left most you know, a lot of the books there and. Piled that van full of Balaram's feast. And the biggest part of all was Varuni beverage. You know how Balaram drank the Varuni beverage and got intoxicated? Varuni beverage is um, half water, half um, yogurt, and a ton of honey. That's how, at least that's how we made it in those days. It was like almost drinking liquid honey. I drove back to that... <laughs> And I told the boys I was coming, but so that I wouldn't be discovered by the by the monks. I uh, came in at two o'clock in the morning. But all the boys were up. <laughs> I said, what are you boys doing up? Oh, you know, Maraz, the Le Prad, the Balaram, the Varuni, the Beverage, oui. I said, you boys go to sleep right now. You're going on Sankatan tomorrow. We will have this feast after Bhagavatam class. <laughs> they became so upset. I said, I'm the Sankatan leader. You do what I say. Go to bed. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a revolution. <laughs> Mutiny on the bounty or something. So <laughs> They went to sleep. And we, they, we woke up in the morning. They were up right on time. No problem getting them up. Everyone was there for Bhagavatam class because there was no cooking that morning. That morning, And they all lined up. And I started the class. And <laughs> Father Pierre. I think today's not a good day for Father Pierre to come here because there may be some temptation. And we have that prayer, Father, lead us not into temptation. <laughs> so I answered her, I said, Father Pierre, you know, today's like kind of an exceptional day. And we were just thinking maybe you could just like not come in today. And oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Le, le philosophy. The philosophy. Le philosophy, c'est like parfait. It's perfect. <laughs> and I have this desire to hear from you. S'il vous plaît. I said, close the door. Because when he said, s'il vous plaît, my heart would melt. So then I could hear him behind the wooden door. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. And I walked away. He, he became louder. She said, what a Gopinath key. As Gopinath wants to hear the end of the story. <laughs> it's his story. <clears throat> And he began, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. I think, oh my God, he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, you know, attract all the attention from the head monk and everybody else. And I open, okay, okay, come in, come in, come in. Shh, s'il vous plaît, la philosophie, c'est parfait. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it's a perfect philosophy. I know that. And he took me the arm, he said, sit down, hey, s'il vous plaît, you begin to speak. I was so hungry. I had planned to give like a 10 minute class. And all the pots were in the back and the boys were heating up the subject. I mean, these subjects, oh my God. They were so rich and floating. One of those, they call it a curd subject. Do you ever hear of that? There's no, there's no vegetables. It's just, you know, a sauce with floating pieces of curd. They call it a, a curd subject. I said, but it doesn't have subject, but still we call it curd subject. <laughs> it was like that. 
and samosas and pakoras and and you name it. It took up like one quarter of the room. And the boys, just to kind of make an impression on me, they'd come to class with their plates on their laps. Like, you know, hint, hint. So I started giving class, and, you know, they tolerated it for 30 minutes. Father Pierre was in ecstasy. Ah, oui, je suis en question. I have a question. He had a question, and one of the boys was like, no, no questions. No questions. No questions. Not one. Don't ask any, don't answer any questions. So I took the question. It was a good question. The boys started banging their spoons on the plates. Like they do in a prison or something, you know. And Father Pierre was so absorbed in the answer, he didn't even pay attention to that. He was just so involved in Krishna consciousness that it didn't even affect him. I was thinking, I wish I had that ardent desire to hear and that I would very quickly be. He was such a special soul. And you just couldn't help but love him, you know. He was, you know, he was faithful to his path. He just fell in love with the philosophy, the Bhagavatam. And I was like diving and surfing, you know, the philosophy, everything. He had nice, not a challenging question, just to learn more. So after 40 minutes, the boys all stood up. Huh, oh, whoo, boy, we got to get out of Sankirtan and distribute the books. Right? So to do that, we have to eat a little, please. I had to stop the class. Father Pierre, well, qu'est-ce que c'est ça? Qu'est-ce que se passe? Uh, what's happening? I said, well, yeah, they're poisoning. You know, they got to distribute books. And, well, uh, well, uh, he said, there's always tomorrow. And I kept thinking, what's going to happen when we leave? What's going to happen to Father Pierre when we leave? He's become addicted to the philosophy and and the boys. You know, a couple of times he would bring presents for the boys. One time he bought some Christian chanting bees for one boy as a present. You know, he bring things. He got attached to the brahmacharis. So he said, I have to leave. I said, Father Pierre, today is a special day. He said, you said that in class. That every day is a special day in your tradition. <laughs> you said every day is a festival. That's what you said. Every day is a festival. Vous avez un festival tous les jours. Every day you have a festival. I said, yes, but some festivals are more festive than the other festival days. <laughs> he said, you always explaining everything perfectly. <laughs> so I said, just please, just this one time, one more time again, just sit down and take a little something. He said, yesterday, yesterday, I took the rice. I said, how was it? He said, Ah, ça c'est bon. He said, that was very nice. <laughs> so I said, then it, it couldn't be wrong. You know, a little logic, right? It couldn't be wrong. Could it, Father? No. I said, if you take a little more, it might even be more right. Ah oui. C'est vrai. I took him by the hand and said, s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. You, you know, I was using his technique. S'il vous plaît, Father Pierre. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Asseyez vous et prenez un tour un peu les pochades. You please sit down. He was smiling because I was using his same technique. He knew how to get in the room. S'il vous plaît, la philosophie. S'il vous plaît. I said, S'il vous plaît, la pochade. <laughs> <laughs> that clicked. When I said, s'il vous plaît, la prashad, he just like, boing, he sat down. He said, mais, uh, just a petit peu. Just a little bit. He said, less than yesterday. I said, okay. So we got him one of the brahmachari plates, one of those big, you know, stainless steel plates. <laughs> and I put it in front of him, he said, this big a plate for that much food? I said, yes, it's our tradition, you know, in India. I'm thinking how the Madhajis come and keep putting prasadam on your plate. 
when you go to someone's house, you know, you ever have that experience? You go to a house program, and the plate's there, and you're halfway through the meal, and they come and put on a whole other thing like this. Ever experienced that, Roman Charles? So I had this kind of idea in mind. Now, bear in mind, Father Pierre, again, this, you know, he'd never taken any significant food above and beyond what he'd been eating for 45 years. I was a little cautious because I was thinking it might have some effect on him. Like, if you ate rich food in such a in such amount. So I told the brahmacharis, okay, just a little bit for Father Pierre. But a little bit in the mind of a brahmachari is something different than... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, a brahmachari, a little portion of halava is like, that big? <laughs> so the boys came around first with the subjis. And they came with the sweet and sour subji. Had curd, pineapple, cauliflower. <laughs> Even as I'm talking about it, I'm getting hungry. Cauliflower, this um, like yogurt sauce and peas and uh, uh, so many things. You know, you know, ladies, you know better than me. And they came from, and I, I said, Antipur, Antipur, I told the boy, just a little bit. So they put a little bit on Father Pierce. And they came around with the second, there was four subjects. And he just had a little bit on each plate. Little rice. We cut the pakora in one quarter. He had one quarter. That just, and, and he said, stop, stop. He said, That's, I won't eat even half of that. I said, it's okay. So, those boys, they sang with such feeling. And it got really fast. I said, did I hear all the words? Yes, Ma yes, uh, Andrew, you heard all the words. Really? Yeah, yeah, you heard all the words. I said, okay, start. So we had a tradition that the boys wouldn't take until I started. So I was kind of playing a game with them. Went, oh, Lord Balaram Kijai. One time Lord Balaram was walking around the... We don't want to hear any philosophy. Chanting, dancing, and feasting. So I said, Father Pierre is, is a respected monk in our Christian brothers' tradition, so we will ask Father Pierre to start. So Father Pierre is like, he's getting a little like, kind of like going back on his, you know, his thing. I say, um, I don't know. And when the boys, you know, the boys are like, Father Pierre, it's prasadam, it's offered to God. And one boy said, it's not different than the saliva of God. You know, you know the West, because God ate it. It's like, Father Pierre's like, what? I said, don't preach to Father Pierre. He said, I, I, I said, Father Pierre, it's, it's the mercy of Jesus. Because Jesus is God's representative and he wants us to all come closer to him. And he distributed, you know, bread. To, he said, okay, okay, okay. So he took the spoon and he just took a little like that. Hmm. <laughs> and by this at the proper charge. <laughs> like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and Father Pierre is like, he does not notice, he's just like, he's not noticing anything, he's just focused on the prashadam. Like he was so focused on the philosophy, now he's like, the food, you know, he's like looking at it like, oh, mon Dieu. My God, he's saying. Oh, would you? I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, have, have some more. I, I will just take a little. Honey. <laughs> a little more. <laughs> ah, hey, now I will take one big bite. <laughs> he's watching the brahmacharis. Ah, c'est comme ça. He said, it's like that. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> Not like that. He said, no I, no, I said, Father, it's not like that. These are young men. He likes every day. He said, no, no, it's a comes I said, it's not like that. <laughs> Slow but steady wins the race, Father. Because, <laughs> you know, that was the first curd he'd had in 45 years. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember when the first time you took prasadam. Do you remember? Oh, because you were all born devotees from where you came from, this culture, but. In the West, the first time we took prasadam was like a, like a revolution, a revelation. We started laughing and we felt so light and happy. I remember prasad was like, 
addictive. We're laughing. And, and the same thing happened to Father Pierre. He started getting like kind of lightheaded. And, well, I will take some more from that pot. <laughs> Father, just finish what you have. Brrr, finished. <laughs> you should, uh, one, two, three. I, one, two, three, four. What one, two, three, four? I want from all four pots. A, this time, a little bigger, please. I said, Father, there's other things. Oh. Like what? I said, well, not soup and apples. <laughs> Give Father Pierre a pokora. So one boy bought a pokora. Nice, crispy pokora with, with curd in it and cauliflower. And we, all the boys got it. So Father Pierre looked and he looked and he looked at it and he turned it around like that. And now, uh, and then. Oh, ça c'est très bon. <laughs> That's very good. I know, oh my God. Jeez, I was thinking. I said to one boy, do we have a first aid kit here just in case? So Father Perry, Perry said, je prends quatre more, quatre more. I'll take four more of those. I said, not four. You can take one more. Then you can try a samosa. A quoi? A samoumou quoi? Samoumou quoi? I said, not samumu, samosa. Qu'est-ce que c'est un samumu? I, it's kind of like toast with, uh, you know, like vegetables. You remember what vegetables were? <laughs> like that and some spices. And he said, oh, like salt? I said, no, like uh, la turmeric, la svetita. He said, bonbon, come on, come quickly. <laughs> And the boys, you know, this was so uncharacteristic of him because he was always very, you know, very dignified. You know, we are like that most, most of the time. And we also become a little relaxed during kirtan and prasadam. You know, we have our moments. So Father Pierre, he was always like, and now he's going. And the boys are like, they stopped eating. They're like, like you can hear what? What happened, what happened to Father Pierre? Like, is he okay? <laughs> so he brought a samosa. And the boy brought a big one. I said, no, no. Father Pierre said, yeah, that's okay. He said, that's all I mean. <laughs> So the boys, the boys, like they weren't used to eating that fast. They ate fast, but now Father Pierre was eating faster than them. <laughs> so he went through three samosas in 45 seconds. I'm not exaggerating. As we say in English, he wolfed it down. And as a result, like they have this kind of like uh, portion to their to their their robes. It's like this, like kind of like a bib or something. You know, it's like getting all like ghee spots here and little flakes of here. A couple of peas were down here. There was some yogurt over here, and they had this big beard, this big gray beard, and the beard was turning all different colors. <laughs> you know, the turmeric and the and there were you know, anise seeds here and little poppy seeds there. And I started, oh, my God, what's happening here? This, I did, this is getting out of control. And Father Pierre, he just started directing the whole feast. He said, and those little, those little flat things over there, what's that? that's, that's a parata. I said, it's a little heavy for you. He said, no, no, c'est pas heavy. C'est pas heavy, c'est pas moi. It's for me. See, you know. So he took the parata and, like, inspired by the super soul, he started ripping it apart and getting back into the original subjis. And he, he, he like, he, he just mystified the brahmacharis because he took that parata and he, he cupped the food. And he wasn't using a spoon. He started eating with his hands. Oh, my God. And he finished all the subjis on his plate and that whole parata. And then he said, C'est pas le soupe, he said, it's not the soup. I said, no, Father, it's not the soup. This is a little more than you've probably eaten in six months. He said, oui, c'est bon. He said, yes, that's very nice. Uh, yeah, I know it's nice, but, you know, like, slow down. He said, no. I, Father Pierre, slow down. No. I will not slow down. What's next? So 
so I had the boys hide a few of the, the preps, you know, just like a few of like the sub G's or two, one sub G we hadn't had yet. And there was like a different kinds of pakoras and there was some things I don't know the names of. Hide them, hide them, put them under the blanket quickly. He said, what's next? I said, ah, well, uh, <laughs> the sweets. He said, oh, the sweets. I have been looking forward to the sweets. <laughs> okay, Father Pierre, we're going to go really slow here. He said, no. Father Pierre, who's in charge? Moi, me. <laughs> he said, you are my guest in this monastery. You will do what I say. Yes, Father Pierre. <laughs> what should we do next? He said, the sweets. <laughs> I was like, you know. So I said, okay, bring, uh, what, what do we start with? Bring a little burphy. So the boys were in the back cutting the burphy into little small pieces. <laughs> we were like getting scared. What's going to go on here? So they brought a little burphy. He just like, like that. Ah, he said, that's the best yet. And he said, you told us it's always getting better in your lives, right? So what's next? You know, he started taking the philosophy and like preaching to me. It always gets better. So I said, all right, bring it on, you know. He brought, we brought out the halava. Oh, my God. Did he like the halava? We brought him a small bowl, and I had a big bowl. He took my bowl. <laughs> he took my bowl. He still had a little bit of subji, and he ate the subji. And he sat with that big bowl, and he gave me the small bowl. He went, <laughs> <laughs> So they came, and they, they were filling my bowl up, and they started filling his bowl, and they only gave him two scoops. And he grabbed the hand of the server. He said, <laughs> which means up to the top. <laughs> it was a big bowl of olive was swimming in ghee. And there are all kinds of, you know, fruits and everything. He just took that bowl like that, you know. Very slow. He slowed down now because he was getting full. But he, these were tastes that he'd never experienced, even before Krishna consciousness, before coming in contact with devotees. He was just like... And the boys had finished their halava, and they were like looking at me like, oh, what about the sweet rice? Uh, what about the gulabs? And you know, Father Pierre was like... And he started, like, you know, getting all kind of, like, red in the cheeks. And the halibut was definitely spilled all over him, you know. It's just, there was halibut, and there was, like, ghee, and, and it was, like, in, around him, and his beard. I'm thinking, how are we going to clean him up? And then I said, all right, bring on the sweet rice. And, boy, did he like the sweet rice. He didn't even take it with a spoon. He drank it. <laughs> you know, like a thirsty man who hasn't drank drunken water in like two days, how he drinks that bislary water? <laughs> Father Pierre. And all the promise are like, oh, no. Oh, no. They got their little bowls and they're eating like this. He's like, he's like, he puts it in this kind of container we have. And he's like, I don't know how you swallow it. And by that time, his eyes were so glassy. He was just glassy. He was intoxicated. And he started laughing. Uncontrollably. Do you ever go to a feast where you eat a lot of sugar? And you laugh a lot? Raise your hand. You've ever had that experience? You eat a lot of sweets at the Sunday feast. You start laughing? He was laughing uncontrollably. He hadn't had sugar in 45 years. And he goes, ah, hoo, hoo, I don't want to, like, I have to keep my composure on the respected asana. But he was like, Woo, he was almost like a drunken person. And then he went on his side. And he, he, there was, he hadn't finished on He started drinking the sweet rice on his side. Like, and all the boys were like, and they're going, you know, what's going to do with the water here? You know? And then he said, uh, what's next?
And this is like, you know, I don't know. And the boys, you know, they said, yeah, okay, fun up here, woo. And they got, on their, they got down like that also on their, knee, on their you know, on the ground lying like that. And they came closer to Father Pierre. And he started telling jokes in French, which I didn't speak that good of French. He had the boys laughing. And they were rolling, holding their stomachs. Oh, no, 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 no more jokes. <laughs> you know, he's a priest. He's a serious scholar. He's been self-controlled for 45 years. And he's rolling on the ground. I don't know what the jokes were about, but they were, pretty, they were really funny. Because those brahmacharis were rolling on the ground. I stood up like, what do I got on my hands here? I've got a, I've got a, you know, a, a Trappist monk priest, and I've got you know, seven brahmacharis rolling on the ground in ecstasy. And the place, you know, they knocked over this, they knocked over that, and they knocked over the rice, and the sweet rice was spilled. It became a little puddle over there. And it just the room looked like you know, Hiroshima after the bomb. <laughs> and I'm thinking... How am I going to get these guys out on Sankerton today? And what's more, what am I going to do with Father Pierre? You know, we have to all go upstairs and eat our apple in 20 minutes. I was praying to Krishna, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do with Father Pierre? Just like push him out the door? He's going to like climb up the steps. Woohoo! Hee hee ha! With Pashadam all over his beard and ghee stains. And what am I going to do? I didn't know what to do. So we ate the gulabs. And that was a real experience. I also got on the floor. What the heck, you know? All right, guys. We had this tradition in those days. We would take the gulabs and we would like throw them. And the boy would put his hand behind his back and he had to catch it with his mouth. And a few of us were really good at it. You know, it's. I'm not recommending this. In fact, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this. I'll probably get a letter from the GBC. But in our youth, in America, in the old days, okay? That covers me. <laughs> we were young. We didn't know, you know. We would throw. We would have these contests. And even I remember one time at the Chateau in France, it got to the point where the last two competitors were on the other side of the Chateau, and the person throwing the, the gulabs was throwing them over the Chateau, over the castle, they would sail over the castle. Boom. Boom. After 15 gulabs, one boy missed. And the other boy became a hero of the community. Like every day, except whenever we were serving gulabs, he wasn't interested. He had so many gulabs that day in the contest. So I just, you know, just tossing like that. And the boys, and Father Pierre said, Et moi? <laughs> and me? And even though everyone was intoxicated, I said, Father Pierre, that might be a little too much. Said, but too much. It's not too much. I said, Father Pierre. <laughs> so the boys, they got sober again. <laughs> they didn't expect Father Pierre. So I said, from here to there, I just, and Father Pierre, boop. <laughs> oh, ça c'est le très, 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 très bon. He said, that's the best of everything. And there was a whole bucket of them there, floating. He just went. He didn't bounce one off anywhere. And the last one, boing. <laughs> he couldn't see straight. He was like cross-eyed. And he laid down on the ground. <sighs> Mon Dieu. My dear Jesus, merci beaucoup. <laughs> Thank you so much. He's going on. Then he started telling more jokes and getting wild. And he, they, and he said, oh, hey, philosophy, philosophy. I said, Father Pierre, this is not the time for philosophy. <laughs> he said, you have said chanting and philosophy and food. He said, and dancing. I went, oh, no. He said, I have heard the philosophy. I have heard the song. I have said that, but I have not yet danced. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, you have to do the whole thing in one day. <laughs> he said, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. And the boy's like, yeah, okay, yeah, honey, you're not going to do that, yeah. I go, oh my God, no. And, and Father Pierre started dancing. And he was imitating the Brahmacharya, you know, Brahmacharya skit, you know, like, wow. I don't know about the Ph.D. brahmacharis. 
But Western Brahmacharis, you know, they, they dance and they do the helicopter. And, you know, and also I'm looking at Father Pierre. He's holding some Brahmacharis arm. They're twirling around. And his beard's flying like this. His cap, his hood comes off, you know. And the prashadam on his coat's flying here and there. He's like, woohoo! Woohoo! I'm thinking, God, I wish I had a camera. <laughs> And you know how sometimes when you're trying to land and you let somebody go? Do they do that here? You're not allowed to do that here. They're doing it and you should let someone go and they fly off. So the Brahmacharya let Father Pierre fly off. <laughs> and he could have flown anywhere in the room, but he flew into the pots. <laughs> I could not recognize Father Pierre. He looked like he was part of the subji. <laughs> He didn't care. He got up. Woo! And the Brahmachari is like, yeah, Father Pierre, woo! And Father Pierre was going, Jesus, Krishna, Jesus, Krishna, Jesus, Krishna. I think, God, I, I finally made a devotee here. And then he flew back against the wall again, and he landed next to one pot that was not overturned, the Varuni beverage. A little bit of water, a little bit of yogurt, and a heck of a lot of honey. And Father Pierre, he got angry. He said, you are keeping one from me. I said, I said, I said Father Pierre, you know, le coup de grâce, this is expression in warfare, the coup de grâce, this, this is the bullet that will kill you. The coup de, I said, Father Pierre, say le coup de grâce. He said, ah, oh, ça, 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 ça. He took a cup two, two times this, this large. And w without even distributing it to the rest of us, or even he dipped inside it, and he took this Varuni beverage and just glue, 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 and then another one, glue, 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 and even the brahmacharis are like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> and so I said to the brahmacharis, come on, let's, let's take some Varuni. So we all started taking Varuni. I don't even remember what happened after that. <laughs> it was it was transcendental pandemonium for about a half an hour. We were dancing, Gornit and Nanda Bow, Hoodie Bow, and Father Pierre, Hoodie Bow, Hoodie Bow. <laughs> Gornit and Nanda Bow, Father Pierre, Hoodie Bow, Hoodie Bow. He was shaking, you know, <laughs> and standing around. I'm thinking, well, I, I was thinking for a moment, this is, and I'm thinking, actually, this is good. This is what we need to break the ropes of conditioning, a good dose of Gurunga Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. Outsiders may think, what is this? This is not civilized. But you know, in our association with devotees, these are how we experience the deep water This is what Mahaprabhu did, chanting. Of course, it was a little unusual. But, you know, we'd stop and eat and then dance again. And, you know, the what? But obviously the kirtan was very loud and we weren't aware of it. And we're going in, Father Pierre, he's just dancing around the room. <laughs> Varuni beverage is like, just, he's like soaked in Balaram's mercy. Suddenly, I can't do it loud enough. Sorry for the sound technician there. The door, there was this loud, hard knock on the door. And everyone froze but Father Pierre. I mean, those brahmacharis went white. You know, they just went white like a, they'd seen a ghost. And they're standing there with the car dolls, the drums hanging halfway down. They've also got prashadam, you know, in the ecstasy of chanting and dancing, you know, a little prashad. Father Pierre, he kept going, Yahoo! Woo! Hey! Jesus! Krishna! Woo! You know, and, and we're like, and he just keeps going, dancing around the room, and everyone was like a frozen statue. And again, you hear that. And I said, I had no choice. I had to answer the door. And I was just praying that it might just be some other monk who wanted to hear some philosophy. 
<laughs> Krishna, just send number two. I promise I'll give a good class. Even though I'm like... <laughs> I opened the door. It was the head monk. The same monk that had greeted me two and a half weeks ago at the door and given me the rules of the house. And he was with three or four other senior monks. And he pushed the door open for me and he walked in. He said, Kis Kisesa. What is this? And the boys are like, Father Pierre, he's still dancing. <laughs> no, really, he's dancing around the room. We're all, like, I'm up against the wall, like, embarrassed. And the boys are, like, in shock. And Father Pierre, woo, ha, woo, he, yeah, more of that. I want more of that one, you know. And he's like, he doesn't know what's going on. I want more of that, the, 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 the liquid with the, with the miel, with the honey. That one I want, woo. And I had to stop. I said, Father Pierre, hold on. Pourquoi? I said, look over there. And Father Pierre, he looked over there and said, oh, Hello. I have to keep my composure. I can't really do what he did. He, he lost it. He was in samadhi. And he said, oh, he said to the monk, you have to try this one. <laughs> the Varuni beverage. And he started going to get some Varuni beverage to give to the head monk. And one of the other monks stopped him. And they said, take Father Peter upstairs. And the whole way up, they let him up. You, oh, you could hear him laughing all the way up the stairs. <laughs> Krishna, Jesus. Ah! And then the head monk. I mean, we had not done anything wrong in the eyes of God. We we engaged someone in the Sankatan mission of Lord Chaitanya. We, we couldn't be faulted for that. It was a bit rowdy, but we were young men. And we were... We were respectful to the prasadam and to the philosophy and the holy name. And we were just, come on, we were young men. You got it? <laughs> I was only 21. <laughs> and, but, you know, I was a little embarrassed, but not, I hadn't, we hadn't done anything wrong. So I stood before the monk. He said, out. I said, Father, I'm, I'm very sorry that we disobeyed your instructions, but this is part of our tradition, chanting, dancing, and feasting, and, you know, we didn't ask Father Pierre to come out. I, I actually tried to tell him not out. And it just so happened today was Balaram out. Okay. So we, well, it took, he said we had 45 minutes. So it took about four hours to clean up everything, the room, the pots, and the books, and get it all up in the car. And, you know, then we, there was something wrong with the car. They couldn't start it. So we had to wait four hours, and then, you know, we were like on, in the basement, guarded. The whole day went by, and it came to like evening, dark, started getting dark. And the monk came down, he said, now you have to leave. I said, okay, the car is fixed, you know. He said, you have to leave now, and don't you ever come back. I said, Hare Krishna, Father. And so we were going upstairs, and then we got into the van, and... We just started to pull away, and one of the boys said, "said Look up." He said to me, "Indra, look, look up in the in the monastery. There's a there's a window open there with a light on, and I could see Father Pierre, and he was hanging out the window, kind of waving like this. A sad look on his face. So I kind of waved back, and he was just you could see he was just he probably <laughs> recovered from the effects." His first effect of taking prasadam. And then one of the monks on his nightly walk walked past me in the car and he threw a little note into the car. He just walked by, landed in my lap. I grabbed that note and I, I could sense it was something really special. And I sensed it was probably from Father Pierre. But I didn't want to say anything to the boys because the boys were devastated. They... He, for, for them, he was like one of the boys, but he just, it was like he was initiated into Krishna consciousness. There was no formal initiation. But initiation is really a question of the heart, where you surrender your full heart to Guru and Krishna. 
and you agree to follow the process. And he'd so much given himself to the process in such a short time, philosophy, Vaishnav Sangha, Prashadam, everything, that they considered him part of the group. So some of the boys were actually crying. We were driving away, and they were looking back. They all got back the little window in the back. They're all seven of them. They're looking through the window, Father Pierre. And we're going down the road like that. And we get to the bottom of the road, and I parked the car. We went to some kind of camping. It was really cold. And I opened the page. It was a full page like this. And he said, my, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, he said, I want to thank all of you so much for coming and giving me your wonderful association. He said, in my 45 years of being a priest here, I have not learned as much as I have learned from you in the last week, nor have I enjoyed so much, nor have I come closer to my God as I have with all of you. He said, I will be missing you dearly. I must sign off now before I'm discovered. Uh, your brother in Jesus, Father Pierre. So that note for me was like sacred. It was like sacred scripture. It was just so, you know, we had touched the heart of a, of a gentleman, a holy man like that in such a way. I mean, it was very gradual, the philosophy, the sangha, and then just a wonderful pastime. You know, I was imagining Lord Chaitanya taking Pshadam with his devotees and the great kirtans they would have afterward. I said it was something like that, just tra a transformation of a, someone's heart. And um, I kept that letter for years and years and years. It was eventually someone stole some of my belongings. And that, that was, for me, one of the dearest things I lost. And I would write letters to Father Pierre on a regular basis, but he never replied. I, I would write him. Every four or five months, I'd say, my, my dear brother in Krishna, uh, you know, we, we so much enjoyed your association because you are, you've been practicing your faith staunchly for so many years, and we are, we are happy to help you evolve in coming closer to God through the wonderful process given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And like I was speaking to this evening, a special incarnation with a special message and a special process, a special bhav. He understood all that. I spoke at length about Lord Chaitanya. I quoted the same verse I quoted tonight from the mouth of Rupa Goswami. He accepted all that. So I was using some of the terminology freely. After four or five years, I kind of gave up because he just wasn't replying. And I thought, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe he became covered by the material energy or just became disinterested. So six years, almost to the day that we were kicked out of the monastery, we were doing Sankatan in the same area. Not all the same boys. I think I only had two of the same boys. There were four other new boys. You know, boys had moved on. Some got married. Some. And I was driving around Metz, and I was thinking, hey, wait a minute. The monastery of Father Pierre is near here. I told the boys, and it was also around the same, it was a little later actually, it was October, so it was, it was the same temperature, I was getting cold. So I said to the boys, I said, I know a monastery, maybe we can stay, and the two boys who had been with me, no, no, you, we're not supposed to stay there. I think it was a Maharaj by Sanyasi by that time. Maharaj, we can't stay there. I said, that's true, but I have to go see someone. I have to go and see someone who's very dear to my heart. But you're not going to get in. I said, I'm just going to depend on Krishna. I, I won't go necessarily to ask if we can stay there, but I just maybe there's a chance I can meet a very dear friend. So the two boys understood. The other boys didn't know. So I dropped everybody on Sankatan, and it was again late afternoon, just, in, just like dawn, uh, dusk. I drove the hour and a half up to the monastery. Again, the same scene. It was like, Getting just starting to get dark, and it was autumn, so the, there weren't so many trees, and it was. But I, I knew what it was this time. So, but it was like déjà vu, we say in French. It was like being there, present again, and my heart was beating. Boom, 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 boom. I want to meet this bhakta. I was thinking like that. I want to meet this man of God who, well, I so much enjoyed sharing Krishna consciousness with and who Mahaprabhu reciprocated with him so amazingly. It was a strong desire. So 
I stood in front of that door like for five minutes before I knocked because I knew I could get in big trouble. They may come out and become violent. That monk said, you never, ever come back to this ashram. But I was thinking that even with that, I still have to try. Maybe I'll see Father Pierre up in the window <laughs> and he'll wave to me and I'll shout, Father Pierre, I've been writing you six years. And he'll say, oh, thank you. You know, that, that would be enough. So I knocked. Nothing. And again I knocked. Three, four, five times I knocked. And then suddenly the lantern. <laughs> and my hair standed, started standing on end, not because of ecstasy. <laughs> I was thinking, uh-oh, I'm going to get the sauce here. And the lantern, I could see it swinging. <laughs> Came to the door. I said, Hare Krishna. But Father Pierre, I'm going to do this. I want to meet him again. I want to see, I want to see Father Pierre again. Just to enjoy a moment with him. <laughs> that door opens, and I just, I almost like close my eyes, like, oh. and I open my eyes, and it was a different monk. It, it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the um, head monk that had come years before. <sighs> I sighed at relief. I said, he said to me, we kind of looked at each other and he said to me, I remember you. I said, you do? <laughs> said, yeah. You, you came, you came with your, your friends, the other monks, about six years ago. And you stayed with us for two or three weeks. I said, uh, yeah, that was us. That was us. I say. He said, and um, you, um, you had a big influence on Father Pierre, didn't you? I, yeah, I guess we did. Uh, I guess we did. Uh, he said, oh, so you've come back. I said, do you want to stay? I said, no, no, Father. We, we don't want to stay. I just wanted to know if I could just, I mean, I know this is really outrageous of me to ask, but I just, I wanted to know if if I could just see Father Pierre for a moment. And he got like all emotional. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, I am so, so sorry. He said, Father Pierre died two days ago. And I just like, you know, I just like kind of fell apart. I said, two days ago? I think in my mind, I had six years to come here. He said, his grave is just over there in the cemetery. I can take you. I said, you can? I, I won't get in trouble? He said, no, you won't get in trouble. He said, because the, I'm the new head priest. The other head priest, he died two weeks ago. I said, oh, he did. I said, he did. He said, yes. I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And we started walking towards the cemetery. It was on a little rise, a little hill nearby. We're walking in silent. I said, to, I said, Father, thank you so much for greeting me as you did and being kind enough to speak to me and taking me to the grave of, of Father Pierre. And I could hardly speak because I was just like so moved. And I said, um, you know, did, did Father Pierre ever maintain like an, an interest? And he said, yes. He just broke in. He knew what I was going to say. He said, yes. He was always talking about you. Always talking about you. How that day transformed his life. How much he learned. How much joy he experienced in his life. And how close he came to God. He was speaking about you all the time. I said, really? I said, that's, that's odd. He said, because I was sending so many letters. I must have sent 40 or 50 letters over the years. He said, yes, I know. But the head priest would always stop them and burn them. Father Pierre never knew that you were sending him any letters. I went, no, you're kidding me. He said, no, he never knew. But he never lost interest. He never lost faith in you and your people. To the very end, he was always inquiring about his little brothers in Jesus who had come 
and increased his knowledge, his joy, and his faith in God. So we walked to the cemetery, and he said, it was a fresh grave, I could see. It was, the dirt had just been turned over. And we stood there for a while, and then I said to the father, I said, can I be alone for a while? He said, you won't be alone. He said, you'll be with Father Pierre. I said, yes, that's what I'd like to do. So he walked back, and it was practically dark by that time. There was a, a lantern standing something nearby, so there was a little light there. So I just, I mean, I'll just tell you what I did. I just, I kneeled down, and then I paid obeisances. And I just kind of revealed my heart to Father Pierre and told him how I missed him and how happy I was to be able to come with the boys and introduce him to Krishna consciousness and what a what a great soul he was and how he, you know, I hadn't seen anybody take to the process like that so enthusiastically. And boy, didn't we have a good time, Father Pierre. And you really liked the sweet rice and the olive oil. And I was just going on. I must have spent 45 minutes there just recounting all that. And then I just prayed to Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya to please take Father Pierre to their lotus feet because I feel that he deserved that. He was a serious monk in his tradition, and I felt that coming to Krishna consciousness, which he had, and he made great steps forward, it was only natural that he could be born in the family of devotees and make further progress in Krishna consciousness. And then I paid my respects again, and I walked back and went back to the monastery, and the, the priest was so courteous that he was waiting for me there near my car, and he came up and he said, well, thank you for coming, and sorry about that. I said, well, if he, the Lord has his plan, I said, I feel that Father Pierre must have gone to it. He said, we are sure that Father Pierre has gone to heaven. And I said, Father, I agree with you. I think he made it. And then I got back in my car and I drove back down. And the boy said, how was it? What happened? Did they kick you out? Did you? I said, no, I'll tell you in class tomorrow. <laughs> so the next day I gave a class like this. <laughs> and I told him the full story about, you know, how Father Pierre waited and didn't get the letters, but was always thinking about us. So I told the story to illustrate the potency of prasadam because I think that's when Father Pierre made his um, quantum leap <laughs> in Krishna consciousness. You know, he was the philosophy he believed in. He liked the devotees, but he just, Atman evaded them. He fully surrendered when he took prasadam. So along with all your valuable preaching here, if someone doesn't, Receive the message so well, give them a gulab. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Shri Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna Mahamantra ki, Shri Nam Prabhu ki, Transcendental Prasadam Distribution ki, Father Pierre ki, Go Pimanande! Thank you, Hare Krishna. grateful to you Maharaj for coming today and this has been one of the most fascinating classes that I've ever heard in my life and I'm, sh and I'm sure I'm sure everybody here in this room shares this <laughs> so we hope and pray Maharaj that you please come again and again and again and regale us with so many wonderful pastimes so let us show our sincere appreciation and gratitude to His, His Holiness Indra Jumna Swami Maharaj by loudly chanting, Haribo!